Hello everybody and welcome to the Mechanical Channel and we're back today with another video featuring a little Wurlitzer. No, not this one. This one. Well here we are at the Candy Wurlitzer. So ben, this is lovely. Where did this come from? Um, this is a 1925 Model F Wurlitzer originally from the picture house in Leicester. It was moved in 1935 to the Exchange Cinema in Northampton and then from there it was bought by a private owner and moved to a cow shed in Bassingbourne. Of all places, yeah. Actually, the cows didn't mind. <laughs> um, and um, it then went from there to Mike Candy's private residence in Hemel Henstead and he uh, built his house to accommodate it and with the help of some friends, particularly David Paulin, uh, he installed it over quite a number of years and it, that's where it remained mm -hmm. until Mike passed away. Um, when it, Mike passed away he left it to the American Theatre Organ Society and they sold it uh, and the Theatre Organ Club have purchased it and have given it on long term loan to us here. It's a fairly ubiquitous model of Wurlitzer but most of the Model F's were modified in some ways, either ranks added or the stops altered, particularly they tended to add a sub and an octave coupler. And the blowers weren't always up to that. So the new gallery, there's some quite famous recordings where the thing is just desperate for wind because they've got sub octave and octave couplers on and big handfuls of cord <gasps> and it's wheezing Gasping away. And, yeah. um, so we have left this as much as we possibly could as original and as far as we're aware it's the only unaltered model that remains yeah which is amazing considering that um i mean i mean I suppose the think everyone thinks of works as these big you know five manual 60 rank jobs but they made more more organs like this than any other yeah absolutely and particularly in the uk the, the model f is one of the most popular ones it's a eight ranks of pipes they're not big shouty organs um but it's a lovely sweet thing um it doesn't really, it's not ideal for a concert, it's a bit small in its current state for a concert. So we use it here as a lobby organ, so as our guests come in, one of our volunteers will play it, and sometimes in the interval. And we've got a screen in here above the bar, so for smaller parties we can show silence in here, and this yep. is really what it's ideal for. Yeah, and of course you've got the, the Christie and the Compton as well, so this being separate as people come in it, it's, it works quite well. It, it does, so it, um, we felt that anybody else who was likely to have it it was going to be their main organ and they were going to likely to alter it yeah. so the Theatre Organ Club really wanted to keep it original which we have as I said as much as possible yeah. um, I mean the main cable still is original, all the relays are still there uh, the blower isn't original um, because Mike never got it uh, the blower is from the Ritz Edgeware. We believe it's buried in a barn somewhere, right. in a farm somewhere. But it, I mean, that doesn't alter the sound of the thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I say it's, it's just it's just the motor that powers it. But everything else is as, as original as yeah. we could. Yeah. yeah. I, also, I also love the way that it's been kept in this, you know, the sort of un, unpainted sort of. Well, it's not kept in this thing. Ah. It has been painted over the years. Right. Uh, so uh, it was at some point. We don't know whether it was at Bassingbourne or Mike's. Uh, it was stripped back to the wood. Um, it's had quite a bit of damage, but Fred Smedley, um, who is a dentist and one of our volunteers, uh, has done a few fillings on it, so you wouldn't necessarily see <laughs> where the... I see what you did then, very good. Yeah, so you wouldn't <laughs> see where, where it was rejoined. Um, so yes, we've kept this in the wood finish, which we believe it would have had in 1925. Yeah. And, and it fits in with the room it's in, of course, which we've got the, sort of the burr wood and the... Absolutely, yeah, so the, the panelling, uh, the, 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 the dividing walls here were in a different orientation um, and they've been here since this end of the building was and rather than cut openings we've removed some of the glass and we've got um, speaker cloth uh, and the shutters are behind there so it sort of doesn't sort of shout out that it's in here yeah. but I've left some glass panels in the end wall there so you can see into the chamber yeah. and I've sort of orientated the pipes and the percussion so you can see most of them so which is unusual for a cinema organ as you know. Yeah. Well, as again, as, a, as, a, as the heritage side of it, it's quite useful for people to come in and see this organ and they can see the pipes and all that before they go in, in there. And obviously, have better understanding it's all real. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they see, they see an organ, they can sort of, um, sort of get their head around the size of it before they sort of look at a 30-odd rank Compton. Although in there, in there they, most people still think that the console 
is the organ. Yeah, that's the that's the problem. I mean, we had the, we had this at the Empress Ballroom Blackpool on an open day. It was a chap um, trying to put his phone against the speakers, thinking that's where the sound was coming from. So, yeah, yeah the, the there's more going on behind the scenes than what people think. Absolutely, and as I say, the fact that people can see it, and we particularly tend to feature the xylo and the glock because they move and the tune sleigh bells, which are quite unusual on this thing. Um, so people can actually see something moving and get a better idea it's real. Yeah. And here we are at this lovely little Wurlitzer organ, unaltered, uh, as Ben's just said. Uh, so we're going to hear some of the sounds. We've got uh, a tuba horn on the organ. An open diapason. A tibia clause, a lovely tibia, this one. Clarinet. A violin and violin celeste. And a flute. And a vox humana. I'm going to add the flute as well, just because obviously on its own, there are, um, it's, a little, it's a little strange, but you put, sort of put them together. And you... I mean, the Vox Humana, just a quick, a quick touch on this, it is the closest that they could get to the imitation of the human voice. And bearing in mind this is all done with pipes, I think you can understand... If you can imagine someone singing, that is there. We've also got some tune percussions. We've got cathedral chimes. Tune sleigh bells, which is always nice. A xylophone, a glockenspiel, and a chrysoglot. And that's really all there is to it. There are, of course, the, the bass drums and the kettle drums, things like that. Crash cymbals, things like that. Snare drums. Tambourine, cassonettes, Chinese block, and a tom tom. And that's all there is. Thanks very much for watching everybody, hope you've enjoyed the content today, if you have please like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you never miss another video. Until next time, bye bye for now.